<laughs> oh shoot. Do you know what tennis balls and digit PCR has in common? It's Poisson statistics and random distribution. Let me show you. This tennis court offers a perfect way to explain Poisson statistics in a simple way. We are going to show you in a simple way how we can use partitioning instead of a bulk reaction. So this was hard for me to find the target molecule, the tennis ball, in a bulk reaction. Poisson statistics is all about random distribution and that is what we use, the power of that statistics when we actually start to randomly distribute the target into the petitions. But that happened. We actually are increasing the effective concentration. So the competition within each petition now perhaps has our target tennis ball together with one instead of in bulk reaction where it's completely covered so it's impossible to find it. So we have thrown 20 tennis balls into 20 buckets. Is every bucket filled with a tennis ball? No, they are not. Because of random distribution, the blue tennis ball and the yellow tennis ball will end up randomly into these partitions or tennis balls, if you will. And our nano plates work the same way. So the blue tennis balls are ending up in a bucket, perhaps together with one or two yellow tennis balls. But most importantly, one third of the buckets will be empty. So the partitioning, throwing randomly into partitions, has proven much better way to find the blue tennis balls than in this situation. <laughs> so, the situation we don't want is a situation where we have the yellow tennis ball in all the buckets. Because we are using the empty ones to be able to calculate the concentration. So how our algorithm works is that we are validating all the petitions with the reference diet within our master mix. So that is the valid petitions, meaning accepted petitions, accepted buckets that we use for calculations. If we have a target in each of these, we call that the valid petition. So if we have the valid petitions, then we actually withdraw the positive amplified petitions. So if we have the same amount of positives as valid, we cannot calculate the concentration. So that means the volume needs to be X exact. So that is why we are implementing the volume precision factor. So how does that work? <laughs> well, here you have two nano wells. Well A and B. So as you know, this bucket, if I fill this with water, and I fill this one with water, and then we measure the volume. It will not be the same because they are made differently and not perfect. The same conditions are in our nano wells. And this is what we are aware of. And using Poisson statistics to be able to calculate, we need the volume to be constant. All the buckets within A has the same volume, but it's a slight, slight difference from B due to the manufacturing part where we use a stamper. So that is what we are actually putting into the VPF. So we are compensating for the, the differences, the small but very there differences in volume to be able to calculate the concentration exact. So what sets the limit of detection? Well, it's simple. It is the rule of three. So if you want to detect one tennis ball, you actually need to screen three. So the lower limit of detection set by digital PCR is actually based on the amount of DNA or amount of tennis balls you have. The dynamic range, however, is set by the number of buckets you have available. So that is why the 8500 nanoplate has less dynamic range than the 26K plate. So now you have learned how a tennis court 
can teach you about puzzle statistics and random distribution. Up next, in DPCR, absolute, not relative, behind the scenes and the assembly of KQT. Stay tuned. Kyogen. Sample to insight.